how are you all doing i'm sure you're all wondering winifred where are you this is not your kitchen space no this is not my kitchen space i'm actually in cape town south africa um currently and then this is my hotel room i'm going to film a tour of the hotel room in another video this is not what this video is about anyways just in case you're wondering what i'm doing here i'm actually here to film a cooking show for honey africa tv one of the biggest um, tv stations in africa and the name of the cooking show is going to be my niger plate you can follow me on ig for all the details and then i'll film another video just giving you more details about the show and showing you a little bit of some behind the scene action just in case you are interested anyways this particular video is just to show you what i eat in a week to maintain a healthy weight i get a lot of requests from some of you asking me to share healthy recipe options that you can use to lose weight or to maintain a healthy weight and then i thought it best to film this video to give you ideas on what you can eat on your weight loss journey or on your weight maintenance journey just to achieve your weight goals okay so um this video is just going to give you like an idea on what you can have for breakfast lunch and dinner the recipes are very easy to make very easy to follow ingredients are very easy to source and i hope that it helps you out as much as it helps me this is literally what i eat in a day from monday to sunday and i always say that if you are going on a weight with um weight loss or a weight maintenance journey don't starve yourself you don't necessarily have to starve yourself to lose weight you can eat all you want to eat and still lose weight but you have to just be mindful of the quality of food that you're eating and i hope that this video helps you out with that all right guys with no further ado let's get right into the video and i'll see you afterwards take care guys on monday and tuesday i'll be having a banana oats porridge now this is a simple breakfast recipe that's pack loaded with healthy nutrients. These are all of the ingredients that I'll be using to make mine. In a pot, pour in some milk. Now I'm using some soy milk because I am not a big fan of dairy, but feel free to use any milk of choice, okay? Now bring the milk to a gentle simmer, then pour in the oats and chia seeds. Mix together to combine, then cover the pot and leave to cook on low heat for about 5-7 to seven minutes or until the oats are softened. Now while the oats are cooking, mesh the bananas with the back of a fork until it is completely meshed. After about 5 minutes of cooking the porridge, it should have thickened up by now and it should be nearly almost cooked. Drizzle some honey and then add the meshed bananas into the pot and then mix again to combine. Leave to cook for a final one to two minutes, then take off the heat immediately and serve. You can top with some banana slices, coconut chips and nuts or any other fruits of your choice, okay? For Wednesday and Thursday, breakfast will be a whole wheat toasted bread with avocado spread and hard boiled eggs. Now start by boiling the eggs till they are completely cooked and this should take about 15 to 20 minutes. To make the avocado spread, place the avocado in your plate and season lightly with some garlic powder, pepper and salt. Trust me on this one guys. <laughs> then mesh with the back of a spoon till it is completely meshed. Afterwards, just set it aside. When the eggs are fully cooked, peel them and then cut them into slices and set them aside as well. To toast the bread, cut a pan on medium heat with cooking spray or oil, or you can also use butter. Then place the wheat bread in the pan and allow to toast on one side for about 2 minutes. Flip to the other side and toast again as well. When the bread slices are fully toasted, it is time to assemble this breakfast. Place the bread slices on a flat surface, then top each bread slice with some avocado spread. Ensure that the avocado spread covers the entire surface of the bread. You can use the back of the fork to create short strokes just to make the breakfast look even prettier, okay? Then top with the egg slices. If you don't want to use hard boiled eggs, you can use scrambled eggs as well. It works perfectly well. I added a dash of hot chili pepper sauce just to add some much needed spicy kick to this breakfast. Now you can make it into a you can make this into a sandwich by just covering it up with another bread slice or you can enjoy it open. It is totally up to you. I like it as a sandwich. Okay. Now this breakfast is really really filling and it will literally take you 
up until lunch time. Sometimes it takes me up until dinner and I really don't have to have lunch again. That's how filling the breakfast is. And of course, everything I use are healthy things that are adding healthy nutrients to my body, okay? For Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I'll be having a simple breakfast smoothie for breakfast. Now, these are all of the ingredients that I'll be using. Again, the full ingredient list for all the recipes I showed you today will be in the description box down below, so be sure to check it out there, okay? Now, chop up the apples in bite-sized pieces. I'm using some bananas as well, which are packed loaded with nutrients and will lend some much needed sweetness and creaminess to this smoothie. I'm also adding some beetroot as well for some earthy flavor and a rich, vibrant pink color. Of course, it is also packed loaded with nutrients as well. I'd also be using some grapes, chia seeds, yogurt, and milk. All of these are definitely adding tons of nutrients <laughs> to the smoothie and of course to my body as well. Place all the ingredients in the blender, including the milk and then some ice. Cover and blend until completely pureed. Look at how rich and vibrant in color this smoothie looks and it's all thanks to the beetroot. Now, I'll place this in a bottle and then I'll store in the fridge. I find that it lasts up to four days if properly, if properly stored in a very cold fridge. I'll take the serving for today and just save the rest up in the fridge for Saturday and Sunday. And that's breakfast done guys. Let's move over to lunch. For lunch on Monday and Tuesday, I'll be having some fried rice with chicken breast and veggies. Now start by drizzling some oil in a pan and then allow to heat up slightly. Then add the chicken breast and season with paprika powder, garlic, salt and some seasoning powder as well. Stir fry till it is fully cooked and slightly browned for about 4-5 to five minutes on medium heat. Next, add the diced onions the garlic paste, chopped atarudo and green chili pepper sauce. Now this is a one pan fried rice and everything is going to be happening in this pan, okay? Mix this to combine thoroughly, then add the diced carrots, the dark soy sauce, oyster sauce, the light soy sauce and blended sesame oil. Along with some salt to taste, just a little bit of salt, okay? Because the sauces you just added already have some salt contained in them, okay? Now mix again to combine and then leave to simmer for about 1-2 to two minutes before adding the cooked rice. Now the rice is 100% cooked, okay? So ensure that you pre-cook your rice before adding it now. Now mix again, ensuring that each rice grain is completely coated with the sauce. You guys, look at how beautiful <laughs> the dish is already looking. Now cover this and leave to cook for another three to four minutes so that the rice and the sauce and the veggies just have some time to marry together. Finally, add the red bell peppers and then the spring onions. Cover again and cook for a final one minute. Look at that goodness, guys. Oh, I love this. <laughs> That's how easy it is to make this beautiful weeknight meal. I'm going to be serving this on a plate with lots of veggies and then a small portion of the rice. Remember to portion control and then make up the plate with plenty of veggies. That way you get full and wouldn't want to eat a lot of rice, okay? If you haven't watched the video on how to eat rice for weight loss, I'm going to put the link in the description box down below so you can check it out there, okay? For Wednesday and Thursday, we're going to be having some garden egg sauce with sweet potatoes. Now start by cutting up the garden eggs and bell peppers to make them easier to chop in the food processor. Then place the cut up garden eggs and bell peppers in a food processor and then roughly chop it. I also added some onions to this as well. Now, this is the exact consistency that you want your garden eggs to have. It's not um, smoothly chopped. It's like very roughly chopped, okay? 
Next, move over to the stove top and then add the bleached palm oil and allow to heat up slightly. Then add the chopped onions and stir fry for about 30 seconds. Afterwards, you add the green chili sauce and the garlic paste and then you continue to stir fry for another 10 seconds. Then the chopped fresh tomatoes, um, some seasoning cube powder, crayfish powder and some salt to taste go in next. This is all the seasonings that I'll be using for this um, sauce. Mix everything to combine. Cover the pot and leave to fry for about 4 to 5 minutes. Then afterwards, add the ejakika fish. Now, this is just dry smoked fish that's also known as panla fish in this part of the world. But at this point, you can really use any protein of your choice. Even chicken would work very well. Um, I'm using ejakika fish today. Mix again, then cover and leave it to continue to cook for another five minutes. This would help intensify the flavor of the sauce. Afterwards, add the chopped garden eggs and mix again to combine. also added a little bit of palm oil to give it some color um, but you do not necessarily have to add the palm oil if you don't want but um, I highly recommend it because it's going to help uh, make the garden extras look a lot better and then I also added some crayfish powder because I think you needed more crayfish and then I also added some water to loosen it up mix it up one last time then cover and leave to cook for a final three to four minutes And that's it guys the sauce is ready now this is what i'm going to be having on wednesday and thursday for lunch and i'm going to be serving it with some sweet potatoes but you can use boiled yams uh, you can use rice if you want you can just be very adventurous trust me guys this sauce is amazing and you definitely love it For lunch on Friday and Saturday, I'll be having some grilled croaker fish with steamed vegetables. The full ingredient list will be in the description box down below, so be sure to check it out there, okay? Now, place the fish pieces in a bowl and then season with some garlic powder, onion powder, seasoning cube powder, green chili pepper sauce, some garlic paste, paprika powder, juice from half a lemon, then drizzle some oil over it and then add some salt to taste. But you can pretty much season this with any seasoning of your choice. That's totally up to you. Mix to combine until the fish pieces is thoroughly coated with the seasonings. Place the grilling rack on an oven tray and then generously coat the rack with some cooking spray or oil so that the, the fish pieces won't stick to it when it's grilling. Now place the fish pieces on the rack and then into the oven and allow to grill at 180 degrees centigrade for about 20 to 25 minutes or until it is fully browned. Now while it is grilling, prep the veggies. Now I'm using some cauliflower and other vegetables as well. I'm just going ahead to cut up the cauliflower into bite-sized florets, okay? So heat up some oil and then add the onions, carrots, the cauliflower, some garlic powder, paprika powder, a pinch of seasoning cube powder, and then some salt to taste. Mix everything to combine. Now, I merely want to soften things up so the veggies are more enjoyable, okay? So drizzle a little bit of water to create some steam and then cover the pan and allow it to steam up for about two to three minutes. Afterwards, open up the pan and then add the remaining bell peppers. Cook for another two minutes and then take off the heat immediately. All that's left now is just to serve this up on a plate. So put the fish and the veggies side by side and boom, lunch for Friday and Saturday is ready. I'm just going to save some fish and veggies for tomorrow and when it's time, all I'll just heat it up slightly in the microwave and my lunch is ready. Now this is clean eating at its best. I don't know what else can be better than this. <laughs> For dinner on Monday and Tuesday, I'll be having a simple chicken salad. Now this comprises of some of the most popular veggies in Nigeria, but you can pretty much use any vegetable of your choice, okay? As usual, the full ingredient list will be in the description box down below, so be sure to check it out there, okay? Place the chicken breast in a bowl and season with some garlic powder, paprika powder, onion powder, garlic paste, seasoning cube powder and salt to taste. 
or you can pretty much use any seasonings of your choice okay drizzle a little amount of oil over it so that it will help the ingredients stick to the chicken then give it all a good mix to combine ensuring that the chicken breast is fully coated with the ingredients now move over to the stuffed top and drizzle some oil in a pan that's already heating up on medium heat when the pan is hot enough transfer the chicken breast into the pan and allow to pan sear on one side for about four to five minutes until it is fully browned before flipping to the other side to pan sear again for another four minutes or until it's fully browned it's always advisable to do this on medium to low heat so you don't burn the chicken okay afterwards what i like to do is just cover up the pan and reduce the heat to the lowest and just allow the chicken sit in the pan for another two to three minutes just so that it has time to fully cook through inside if it's not fully cooked through okay afterwards remove the chicken from the pan and set on a place to rest let it rest for about 10 to 15 minutes before cutting into bite-sized pieces now cut the other vegetables. I'm using some cabbage, carrots, lettuce, cucumbers, bell peppers and sweet corn. Just give them all a good chop and you're pretty good. When the veggies are all chopped, grab a salad bowl and assemble the cut veggies in layers. Okay, now this would help prevent um, you from over mixing the vegetables, which can lead to it going so bad. So doing it in layers means that you get to have a scoop of every vegetable when you're serving. Okay, look at how pretty that is. After what all that's left is pretty much serving this on a plate. So serve the chicken, um, the chicken breast on a plate along with the salad side by side. You can drizzle some salad dressing on the vegetables if you choose, like I'm doing now. This is just a salad dressing made from yogurt. Okay, now I also like to enjoy this with some hard boiled eggs for some extra protein. And that's it guys, that's dinner for Monday and Tuesday all sorted out. I'm going to keep some of these in the fridge for tomorrow and when it's time I'll just take out the chicken microwave it and heat it up and then just mix up the salad again and I'd enjoy my dinner. For dinner on Wednesday and Thursday, I'll be having brown rice with a simple chicken and vegetable sauce. You guys, it literally takes about 30 minutes to put this together. So let me show you how it is made. So start by cooking the brown rice. I have a detailed tutorial on how to make the perfect brown rice. So please check it out using the link in the description box down below, okay? So for the sauce, just drizzle some oil in a pan and allow it to heat up before adding the bite-sized chicken breast pieces. Now, I cut this chicken breast in strips, but you can cut yours in cubes if that's what you want. Season lightly with some garlic powder, some paprika powder, onion powder, and then some salt, along with some green chili pepper sauce. You can use the fresh peppers if that's what you have. Mix together to combine, then stir fry for about four to five minutes until the chicken has lost all of its pinkness and it's slightly browned. Now take it out of the pan and then set aside. In the same pan, add the onions and then stir fry for a few more seconds before adding the garlic paste and the pepper. Stir fry for another 10 seconds, then add the tomato paste. Mesh the tomato paste up and continue to stir fry for two to three minutes till it is very well fried. Afterwards, add the chopped fresh tomatoes and then season with some seasoning powder, paprika powder, curry powder, fine, and then some salt to taste. Mix again, cover and leave to fry for about 5 minutes or until the oil sizzles on top of the sauce. Then open up the pot and add the cooked chicken along with some water or chicken stock if that's what you have. Mix again, then cover the pot and leave to simmer for 5 minutes. 
While it is simmering, make a quick cornstarch slurry by just adding some water to some cornstarch until the semi-liquid consistency is formed. Now, this cornstarch is what's going to help thicken up the sauce for us. You must add some cornstarch, okay? When the sauce is simmered for five minutes, pour the cornstarch into the sauce and then add the carrot strips as well. Mix to combine, cover and leave to cook for another two minutes. Finally, add the green beans that I also cut in strips and then the bell peppers as well. Mix again, cook for a final 10 minutes and take off the heat immediately. Serve the brown rice and the vegetable and chicken sauce on a plate. And then remember to um, call your family and friends to enjoy you in this very healthy feast. And of course, remember to control your portions, okay? If you have any leftover sauce, which I'm certain that you're going to have, you can just pop it in the Tupperware and then just throw it into the fridge. And then I, I tell you guys, it gets better as this sauce gets old. So, um... Whenever you want a quick meal, you can just boil some rice or boil some yams or boil some plantains and just enjoy you enjoy it with the sauce, okay? Dinner on Friday and Saturday will be pepper soup, okra soup. This is how I make it whenever I want to just enjoy this soup without having it with swallow. Start by adding some oil to the pot along with some bleached palm oil. Now allow this to heat up slightly before adding the diced onions. Stir fry for a few seconds, then add the garlic paste and the green chili pepper sauce. Now if you don't have this green chili pepper sauce, you can use atarodo, which is the fresh pepper, just chop it up and use it. But if you want to use this green chili sauce, I'm going to put the link on how I made this in the description box down below so you can check it out there, okay? Now stir fry for a few more seconds. Next, add some ground crayfish, seasoning cubes, pepper soup spice, which is the star of this dish, of course, and then stir fry for an extra minute to wake up the spices. Afterwards, add about three to four cooking spoons of a pepper blend mix. Now, in this pepper blend mix, I have tomatoes, I have tartar shit, I have onions, and I also have some garlic as well. Now, stir everything to combine. and then cover the pot and leave to fry for five minutes. When it is perfectly fried, add the smoked spanla fish and then I also added some dry catfish as well, along with some water and some salt to taste. Stir everything again to combine together and then cover the pot and leave to cook for about five to eight minutes. Afterwards, add the okra paste. I simply put some okra in a blender and then I added a little water um, and then blended it up until it was um, this puree was formed. Now, this is what's, what will help the okra soup draw very well. And it's one of the secrets that I use to achieving um, that drawy consistency whenever I'm making okra soup, okay? Finally, grab the chopped okra. I'm also going to use some chopped okra because I want that extra crunch that it will give the soup. I added a little more okra paste because I really wanted um, that a little bit more of that drawy effect. But remember that this is okra pepper soup. You don't want it to draw so much like you're eating okra soup. You just want it very light, but you still want it to draw slightly, okay? So remember that when you are um, adding the okra paste to the food, okay? Now, take this off the heat and serve immediately. Like I said before, I like to enjoy this as just a soup, but there's nothing stopping you from enjoying this with some swallow as well or some rice. This is just a lighter version of your uh, regular okra soup that we'll usually make, okay? Mm -hmm. 